Bang! Needs Knives. I'm Jared, and today we're talking about Urban EDC Strops. Urban EDC Strops is located in Australia and uses authentic kangaroo leather that they locally source. I'm going to link his page below where you can read through it and check out the other things he offers on his site, like clamps, different kinds of diamond stropping compounds, um, custom cut leather for whatever size, and everything else. Also here in a second, I'm going to show how to hone, how to strop, how to apply compounds, and what I think about the different kinds of compounds, the stuff I like to use, when to use it, and just basically everything about stropping and honing. Now here you see me applying some of the compound that they sent me to this strop. And, you know, you want to make it a very, very thin layer, the, the less, the better. And I noticed it wasn't spreading as good as I would have liked. So I decided to heat up the leather just a little bit, but if you don't have a blow dryer or something, just know you can easily do this, but you do not want it caking up. You, you know, like I said, the little, the better, you know, you only want a very thin, thin layer over the surface of the leather. Now, like I said, I did, you know, want to heat up the leather a little bit and the compound. So I actually broke out a blow dryer and heated it up just a little bit, which right after this, I wound up putting on just a little bit more compound, just a couple little specks, heated that up as well. And then it did spread a lot easier. So this actually was a really easy way to spread the compounds. Now we're going to talk about other compounds here in just a second, but after spreading it all out, I did let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours. And that's another reason why you want it nice and thin, because if you put it really thick, it'll take a long time to dry. And then it, it just doesn't work as good as if you have a very, very thin, thin layer. But afterwards I did, I've been using it. I've been shopping with it for, for a while now. I mean, um, at least long enough to, to form my opinion on not only the leather, but also the compound. But before we get into my opinion directly on this leather and compound, I want to talk about a couple other things like honing and stropping and how to strop. So a good way to do this is to start from the tip at an angle and you're going to drag down and away at the same time. And then after you get around a little bit, now you see the edge that's not touching because you, you want to make sure you're watching the, the edge that's touching the leather. Now once I get to here, I'm going to drop my elbow down as I'm sliding it across. Now the angle, you want to be as close as possible. Obviously the, the closer you are to the angle of the edge, the better. But it's if you're unable to really figure out if you're getting the right angle, just don't hold it upright. Make sure you're laying it down, you know, like because you're not going to hurt anything by going too low. But by going too high, you will hurt something. It will dull the edge. So the worst thing that will happen by laying it down too low is you'll polish the back of the bevel. So again, start with the tip. Drag it down and back at the same time. Once you start coming around, drop to the, get the rest of the edge all the way to the very heel and drag back. Now, same thing going the opposite way. And you want to do this depending on the the compound and what you're doing because this can also be done at the end of sharpening it can be done in between sharpenings like to maintain your edge but about five to ten times per side um now like i said that you know you can do more or less depending on what you're doing now let's talk about honing really quick because Honing is a great way, and I'm going to link as much stuff as I can below, but, you know, the, the stropping compound that we're going to talk about, the one micron compound, that is all going to be found on, you know, his website. This I can link below. This is mine. It's just a, a ceramic rod. But the point is, is that this is a great 
tool for anybody that has pocket knives, kitchen knives. It's just, it's a very useful tool. So what, one, you can use it for when you're sharpening. At the end of your sharpening, when you have your last burr, you can use this to knock it off and then go to the strop. Now you can also use it in between edges. So after you've used your knife for the day, you come home, it's feeling a little, uh, you know, it's feeling a little used. You feel like your edges and is sharp. What you can do is very gently, you can do this with two fingers, but the point is, is no pressure at all. You just set it down. Now you don't want to be flat. You don't want to be upright. Go about halfway between there. So halfway between this and this is right there. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to worry about the angle too much because you're not trying to hit the entire edge bevel. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the very tip of the apex of your edge to hit the stone and then just lightly drag it across. No pressure at all. This is a very hard surface and it will do the work for you. So you do just a couple passes on each side and then you check it. The way you check it is you rub your finger like this across the edge. And what you're doing is you're checking to feel for a burr because what'll happen is it'll roll from one side to the other. Now, if you, if you do feel one, you can take one more very light pass on here or you can just go right to the strop. So after doing that, then you move to the strop and you do your stropping process, which this will help you maintain your edge for a very long time. I can't explain how critical this is to any knife um, user, even in the kitchen. Now, another thing, so, there's also ways to use your stropping compounds as progression. So basically what you can do is you can get multiple ver multiple different kinds of compounds. So you can start like say with a, a 15 micron, then a 10 micron, then a six micron, then a three micron, a one micron, a half a micron. And you can basically turn your edge finish into a polished finish or an aggressive finish, just depending on which one. So the, the higher the micron, the more aggressive it's going to be. So 15 micron is gonna be more aggressive than one micron. Now, this one right here that I have that I used on here is one micron. One micron is, is very fine. So if you have a polished edge, this will be just fine on your polished edge. It won't hurt it. Now, um, basically my polished edges or a lot of my polished edges are three slash two micron. So one micron is, is finer than the, the stone that I come off of for my polished edges. Now, you know, some polished edges are going to be 10,000 grit, you know, and be a half a micron. It just kind of depends. However, you can still use the one micron to, to maintain your edge. And if you don't know, there's different kinds of compounds, like say the green paste, the, sur the aluminum oxide paste. It's kind of like a crayon. This stuff right here, it's a polishing compound. Now this stuff is normally around three micron. Now I do recommend that stuff probably the most, that or the white compound. This it looks the exact same except for it's white. That's usually around six micron. Now the aluminum oxide stuff is great. It works great. It's extremely affordable. Now, the biggest difference between the diamond and that compound is I noticed the diamond lasts a little bit longer. The aluminum oxide does seem to break down a little bit faster, but it's also very easy to apply. You just grab it and, and rub it on. Very easy to apply. So, and the diamonds, they are a little bit more, they're not as easy to apply. So there is going to be the benefits and downfalls for each one. But, you know, regardless of which one you get, just know how to use it, know how to apply it. And, you know, so that you can get the best out of it. Now, going right into this specific strap, 
The leather is good quality. Um, I do like the leather. And like I said before, he also offers custom cuts. So meaning, you know, custom sizes and things like that. But this one, however, is pretty thin in my opinion. Now, let me just say he's offering the thin leather for a reason. It's to help keep the edge nice and flat when you're using it so because the thicker stuff does take a little bit more effort and knowing how to strap because you can't put too much pressure and you can bend the leather which can convex your edge so by using the the thinner stuff on a hard flat surface it helps to keep the edge nice and flat for your v grinds you know there everybody has their what they like, what they dislike, and, you know, what they like to use better. And they he likes to use the thinner stuff so to help keep the edge nice and flat during use. I mean, I do like the surface. I don't know this is like some sort of plastic or fiberglass or something that he sent it on, which I do like. It's nice and flat. I can easily hold it. It's a great size. The leather is great quality. And this particular leather is in between the fluffy and the hard. Some people like really hard leather. Some people like the fluffy leather. I'm more into the kind of the fluffier stuff, but I like them all. I like all leathers and, you know, stropping, um, you know, different compounds. You know, I get into that stuff. So you, you kind of got to find what you like the best. I personally like the fluffy stuff the best. Now, this one, like I said, is very thin. Now, the one problem with that, in my opinion, is that when... I've used this one up, right? And I've reapplied the, the 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 paste or the compound multiple times. And now the, there's just a lot of steel on the surface and I need to clean it off. I take a uh, sandpaper or a razor blade to the surface and I basically remove it and then I reapply. So I have a fresh surface of leather. I'm not gonna get too many um, resurfaces out of this thin of leather. I could still get probably multiple, you know, or, you know, multiple uses out of this, which just one fresh surface lasts you quite a while. So the one micron um, stropping compound is pretty good. I do like it. Um, I, I like, in my opinion, I like six micron, three micron, and one micron. That's usually the, the, the area I like to go. I do have some more aggressive stuff that I use from time to time, which is also really good. Uh, some of the compounds can damn near sharpen your edge for you because they're that aggressive. I got one compound that's so aggressive, you can literally feel the diamonds. It feels like sandpaper. This stuff is going to be a lot finer than that, but it does work great. And um, like I said, the leather is really good quality. So um, I'm going to link his website below for you guys to check it out if you guys want to get that stuff. Make sure, though, you do have, you should always have, especially, you know, whether it's for your kitchen, for your EDC knives, for your tools, you should have a strop. You should have a hone and a strop. Now, if I was going to hone my edge, right? And I'm not talking about with a rod. So you can hone your edge like the way I just showed you a minute ago, or you can use it as your finishing stone. So what that means is I'm not knocking the burr off. What I'm doing is I'm at my last stone and now I want to polish my edge with my my very, very fine stone, whether it's, a, say, a hard Arkansas, a, a fine ceramic from Spyderco, or maybe a Veneve stone. That will be like my polishing stone. So you can use your ceramic stones for that as well. But basically what I'm talking about right now is just as a, a deburrer or an edge maintenance tool, which is going to be a ceramic rod. You can use a ceramic plate as well, but it's going to be much more expensive. So that's going to be on you, whether or not you, you know, want to put forth the, the money for a ceramic plate, but you can use it just the same. With a rod, though, you know, it's more versatile. It's very cheap, you know, and it's so useful. But the leather, though, this is a must. It is a must for anybody who who carries a pocket knife and wants to make sure they maintain their edges. It will save the life of your knife because the more you let your edge chip and get dull, the more steel is going to have to be removed when it comes time to sharpen. And 
you know, it's just safer to have a nice, keen, sharp edge always. So when I'm done with work, I come home, first thing I do is clean my knife and then I hit the strop. And if I need to, hit that first and then the strop. So, and like I said, one micron will do just fine for edge maintenance, but you might want a little bit of a coarser grit uh, for, um, you know, for a working edge or for edge maintenance. Um, I would have no problem using this for edge maintenance or for a finishing, um, you know, strop after I'm done sharpening. But there you guys go. Um, like I said, I'm going to link as much as I can below. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.